Hello, my name is Burke Kirk and I'm the pastor of Indian River Baptist Church. Thank you so much for checking on this video or coming to our website. Uh, maybe you're doing so because you received a, a free Bible at one of our outreach events. If you received it at one of the outreach events, thank you for that opportunity to minister to you. And please let us know how we can minister to you in the future as well. Uh, maybe you didn't receive a free Bible and you would like a free Bible. Maybe that's why you've clicked on this. Uh, if that's the case, please contact the church. And of course, there'll be a description and uh, a link in the description uh, that shows you how you can request a free Bible. But the purpose of this video is also just to simply explain the overall story of the Bible. You know, sometimes people have a hard time understanding the scripture. They think, well, it's written so long ago and I don't understand it. And that's one of the reasons we use this particular translation uh, to, to give away. It's a little easier to read uh, than some translations, uh, but it is faithful to what the Word of God says. But you know, when you understand the overall picture of the Bible, it helps you to keep it all together because it is a cohesive story from beginning to end, from the book of Genesis all the way through to the book of Revelation. There is a cohesive story. And the story goes simply like this. And in fact, it's a story that you see played out in multiple ways. You see it in different uh, avenues. Think of a favorite movie that you may have had. Usually movies start out something like this. When the movie starts, everything is good. There's not a problem. There's not that. But then all of a sudden, something bad happens. Some evil is introduced, and now everything is all messed up, right? But then you got to have a hero who, who comes along and, and re restores everything. It restores it back so that by the end, hey, things are better and things are good. You know, modern storytellers follow this. And it's because it was first introduced in the Bible. It, this whole concept was first laid out. And if you think of the Bible in that terms, it begins to help put things in perspective. Think about this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and everything was good. And there was no sin, there was no sorrow, there was no death. It was all good. That was God's perfect design. And in the midst of that, he placed a man and a woman, Adam and Eve, and, and they were living in harmony. And he placed them in this beautiful garden and told them, you know, you can eat of all the fruit of all the trees except for one, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the moment that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. And no the sad story of the Bible is the man and the woman ate of the forbidden fruit. And when they did, guess what? Sin entered the world. And when sin came into the world, it brought with it death. And when death came, it brought what? Separation. But you know, the Bible also mentions that there's another tree that was listed in the Garden of Eden. It's called the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life was a tree that they could eat of freely all the time. The implication is that the man and the woman were to live forever in the presence of God. That's God's original intent and original design. But guess what? Something bad happened. Some, some evil came into the world in the sense that the man and the woman chose and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I can illustrate this for you real quickly, how simple it is to, to understand what this means about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I mean, you could take almost any household object. You could take anything, let's just say a pen or a pencil, give it to, uh, show it to a group of teenagers and ask them, what can I do evil with this pen? It won't take long. They can come up with four or five different evil things that they could do with that pen. That's the consequences of the knowledge of good and evil. Before the fall, no one knew what to do with a pen. If you had a pen, it would be to just write stuff. You would not know to use it as a weapon or to do some horrible things with this knowledge of good and evil has infected everybody and everything. And that's why we see the sin in the world. And the Bible illustrates it. That's why you can read some things in the Bible and you're thinking, oh my goodness. Oh man, look at that dysfunction. Look at that evil. And it does. It records it for us. It shows us that. It shows us what the wages of sin is. So, so far, we're thinking about this. Everything was good. Something bad happened, right? And it's impacted everyone. That's why we see everything. And guess what? We can't fix it ourselves. We're not able to fix it on our own. But here's where the good news comes in. There is a rescuer. There is someone who has come into this world to, to set things right. 
There is someone who has come to, to give us hope and encouragement, and more than that, but to give us new life, to restore us to what God originally intended. And that person, that hero, is Jesus Christ. He is the eternal Son of God who, who left heaven and came down to earth and lived a sinless and a perfect life. And then one day he died on a cross, not for his sin, but for our sin. Every single one of us, he died for all our sins. And the Bible tells us, you know, that all we like sheep have gone astray. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So think about that, that all our sin is laid on Jesus. For example, let's just pretend that this just piece of paper that I have right here is my sin. And all my sin is, is written on it. Boy, it had to be some small print because I've done a lot of things wrong. And so have you. You've done a lot of things wrong. But let's just say that this, this, is my, this is me and here's my sin and God is in heaven. Do, do you see a problem? There, there's something, there's a barrier between me and God. And I can't get rid of this on my own. And that's why the eternal Son of God leaves heaven and comes to earth. Lives that sinless life. Dies on the cross for our sins. And the Bible says, And all we like sheep have gone astray. We've each turned to our own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So think about that. The iniquity of us all. The sin of the world is placed upon Jesus. He's our rescuer. He's the one who's made a way so that now I am free over here to have a relationship with God. My sin is taken away. And here's the beauty of it as well. This is the good news. The eternal Son of God also gives us His righteousness. He gives us the righteousness so that we can stand and have a right standing in the very presence of God. See, He, what? he restores us to that original design. And I think if you kind of keep that in mind as you're reading the Bible, yes, there's some things in there that are hard to understand. But that's okay. Keep, keep reading. Hey, call the church. We'll be happy to help explain. Uh, but I encourage you to, to read the Word of God and to let it. I think the Lord is working in some way in your life. If you're still listening all the way through this and you were willing to, to receive a, a free Bible, I believe the Lord is working in your heart at this time. And, and so I encourage you to, to follow that, to, to read the Word of God, to reach out, uh, whether it's our church or, you know, of another Bible-believing church, I encourage you to reach out to them. But don't neglect it. Don't put it off. Just trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. So, again, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to minister. Thank you for, for watching this video. And again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call. We uh, will leave uh, contact information below the webpage. We'll also leave a, a reading plan, you know, how to, to read the Bible uh, and to, to use that as a guide. So again, thank you so much. God bless you. You take care. Bye-bye.